So it finally happened. Becoming is graduating at the end of the month. Thank you so much, Dale. Thank you so much. Uh, I don't want it to leave. <laughs> but I love you guys. I love all of you, no matter what. <laughs> she can't just leave like that. Streamers, for Christ's sake, stop streaming this effing game. Come on. No, they have every right to keep playing the game. Like, I want to talk to you guys. And I don't know why they pick me. <laughs> She announced that she wanted, intended to play the wizard game and put Twitter Annie's together with her like that. Where people were calling her all sorts of names, which led many people to believe that this was the reason she's retiring. Yeah, it is goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Just thank you, Dale. <laughs> what happened to Pika Me? Twitter frogs. There is no reason anyone should be harassed over playing a video game. And they were tearing her apart for simply announcing that she wants to play a wizard game. This whole campaign has been unbelievably embarrassing. Pika! So I, Pena the genius, will solve this puzzle in 30 seconds. Are you guys ready? Everybody, thank you so much. I love you guys. I'll see you later. <laughs> chaos. Complete and utter chaos. We've got people begging their idols not to play a game, backed by a person who supports things that they don't like, things that may deny or endanger their existence, creators insisting on playing the game anyway, and insisting that it is, of course, just a game, and that the creators need to get paid, etc. Said creators, naturally, are facing backlash, and trans VTubers are graduating or retiring out of fear of their own safety. What's going on? Bunny. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Yuki Buns, your peer of heart and dumb of arse snow ghost VTuber. I draw, I rig VTubers, I make videos. It's nice to meet you. If you are a returner, welcome back. I missed you. Gonna slide in here with a little disclaimer. I started writing this video when all of this was fresh news. I was a little slow to the punch on this one, so if it's a little old or things have changed a little bit, um, please forgive. Though stuff keeps happening that's kind of relevant, so we, we, we might be okay, we might be okay. <laughs> if you haven't seen the news on your feed, gosh bless ya. It's all over my Twitter right now. People are upset from all sides. Nobody is happy about what's going on. The TLDR in this situation is that people are angry about a wizard game because of JK Rowling. If you have absolutely no clue what is going on, not even a molecule of an idea, <laughs> Let me walk you through it. And forgive me here because I'm going to go into complex detail so you understand the whole story. I'll probably end up putting chapters so you could skip around if you know the gist and you just want to get the meat to what you want to know about. J.K. Rowling made a series of books that later became movies of which were household names, pretty much, the Harry Potter series. You probably know of them, but if you don't, they were wildly popular and adored world over. With this series, and plenty of others such as various animes, series for instance, troubled youth tend to cling on and hyperfixate on them, as it serves as an escape from the real world. When the real world is a little too hard, or traumatic, or youth don't have the right tools to cope with their day to day, it's easy to get entrapped into a realm such as one like Harry Potter, where you can somewhat craft the kind of person you want to be, and get deeply involved with lore, magic, etc. While there are of course conflicts like any reality, it is one that's way more ideal or adaptable to them than our real one. It's a place that they feel they can truly be themselves, or even something greater. Personally, my young sort of hyperfixation was Naruto. <laughs> It consumed most of my middle school years and it kind of helped distract me from the growing pains of my life at the time. Generally, a kid will grow out of this, right? We move on, life continues, but people typically nod towards those bits of media because they're nostalgic and they mean a lot to them. To these people, even if maybe you grow out of liking the series entirely, it's still possible that the series will hold a special place in your heart, because to you, it saved your life. It gave you meaning when you were otherwise struggling to find it. For me, Naruto isn't really my jam anymore, and 
I don't particularly have the desire to watch or read or keep up with any of it anymore. It doesn't have that spark it once had for me. However, I still cherish the series in a way. I wouldn't go as far as to claim it saved my life, but it was still important to me. For many, Harry Potter and the universe around it was like that for them. The problem with this is, as you can imagine, many of these youths, the same type that find themselves completely engrossed in a fantasy land, are also the same type who may find themselves questioning their gender identity. Many of them are probably also various flavors of neurodivergent. This means with the comfort of the internet, they can find their groove and their niche in the world, finding people like them that they can share their interests with, that they can bond with, and come to a better understanding of who they are. Even after growing out of the rocky <laughs> teen and preteen years, these communities will still stand with the people happily discussing the content that brought them the childlike wonder and joy at some point, and ideals that bring lights to the kind of person they are. To be more precise, there are, or were, literal Harry Potter fandoms, various accounts and blogs and communities dedicated to discussing the franchise and fan spin-offs, and this in turn made for socialization of these kinds of people. This isn't unique to the Harry Potter franchise, of course, it's also observable and pretty much anything else similar. I think it's Star Wars, the Marvel Universe, Super Hulak, etc. With plenty of them cross-interacting, becoming a blend of passionate youth and adults and their fandoms. They are safe spaces to be who they are or who they want to be. But here's where the doo-doo hits the fan. In 2020, JK Rowling on Twitter <laughs> quotes an article about menstruating individuals having difficulties during the pandemic. The article makes mention of the affordability and access challenges menstruating people faced during the pandemic, or lack thereof I should say, especially for people who are displaced, homeless, in quarantine, and those with disabilities. It brings to light the risks faced by women and menstruating individuals during the worst of the lockdown. A direct quote from the article, an estimated 1.8 billion girls, women, and gender non-binary persons menstruate. And this has not stopped because of the pandemic. They still require menstrual materials, safe access to toilets, soap, water, and private spaces in the face of lockdown living conditions that have eliminated privacy for many populations. Makes perfect sense, right? If I knew about it at the time, I probably would have no issue donating menstrual materials to those in need. And of course, those with varying gender identities who menstruate don't just stop doing so because of the pandemic, right? I think we can understand this. No matter your identity, if you menstruate, it needs to be taken care of. The need for care doesn't just go away, neither does your menstruation just because you identify with one way or the other. Seems like common sense, right? Well, our pal JK Rowling pokes fun at these people and the language the article used. People who menstruate sounds like a perfectly reasonable way to address, well, people who menstruate. But she puts on her clown wig and bright red nose and says, I'm sure there used to be a word for these people. Someone help me out. Wimbun, wimpund, wumut. There are plenty of educated things that you could say. If perhaps, I don't know, transsexual people, non-binary people aren't exactly your jam, or if you have criticisms of the article, or if your intentions were to be funny, I mean, there's a way to be funny, but... <laughs> This, this isn't it, makes her appear very ignorant and without tact. This is just a scuff on the surface, however, but perhaps people can move along without a hitch, right? This is until she followed up with another string of tweets just an hour later. If sex isn't real, there's no same-sex attraction. If sex isn't real, the lived reality of women globally is erased. I know and love trans people, but erasing the concept of sex removes the ability of many to meaningfully discuss their lives. It isn't hate to speak the truth. The idea that women like me, who have been empathetic to trans people for decades, feeling kinship because they're vulnerable in the same way as women, i.e. to male violence, hate trans people because they think sex is real and has lived consequences, is a nonsense. I respect every trans person's right to live any way that feels authentic and comfortable to them. I'd march with you if you were discriminated against on the basis of being trans. At the same time, my life has been shaped by being a female. I do not believe it's hateful to say so. Her statements could probably hold water, that is, if she had a better understanding of sex and gender. That is, if the two things are separate. Let me deviate for just a moment here with my own personal journey on the matter. I was born female, I identify as female, and that works just fine for me. I have plenty of friends whose sex is male or female, but their gender identity ranges from female, male, and everything in between. This is something I have come to an understanding of, but it wasn't always that way. I'm going to go into detail for a moment of my journey understanding sex and gender, and this without a doubt is going to piss people off. The reason I'm getting into this will tie into 
into the next chunk of JKR's clonery and how I think she's being a bit dishonest with research and such, but because of the nature of the discussion and the information I'm about to share, I'm going to put a chapter here so you guys can skip. None of this next little bit is meant to be up for debate or discussion. I'm just giving insight on my personal journey, what I found, etc. This video is not the space for the discussion or debate of the existence of transgenderism and what have you. If you don't believe in it, whatever, um, but right here right now isn't the place, okay? Just a warning. All right, carrying on. There was a period of time I was very critical and I did not understand. There are two sexes, I thought, so it didn't make sense how you can be trans if you were born female or otherwise female in the way you go about life, but maybe dressed like somewhat androgynous. I had male to female friends at the time who felt uh, offended and threatened by the movement of growing non-binary individuals and in my care for them and wanting to stand up for what I thought was correct, I very publicly criticized these various flavors of gender out there. If you have followed me for some time, you may remember way back when, when on Tumblr, I had made this big post about me not believing in gender beyond the binary. I was open to discussion and I did have that, though with very few people, whilst the majority slung insults at me and wished violence upon me <laughs> in my anonymous ass box. This of course further fueled me not to budge because... <laughs> None of them could come up with a, like a genuine argument or something that made sense beyond like just f you. Not a good look. I had been listening to individuals such as Blair White, Ben Shapiro, My Milo Yiannopoulos while having non-binary friends in my ear. I wanted to see both sides and come to my own conclusion. The biggest problem was whilst I had no issue respecting how they wanted to be identified as, I still didn't understand nor believe in it. Especially when these talking figures that I was listening to had what seemed like solid reasons that seemed justified as to why the contrary was true. More so that of Blair White, who was actually trans and didn't seem to be operating out of bad faith at the time. What she said made sense to me and I thought it seemed to be in good faith. None of what I was hearing from the other end at the time made any real sense to me. But the fight on gender continued and um, sometimes I'm stubborn as hell, so I really wanted an answer. I wanted a solid answer. Not opinions, not feelings, not left or right or yes or no, blah, 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 blah. Whatever the science says, I want the answer. So I sat down and I looked through various educational journals, medical NCBI, research journals with language and numbers your everyday person might not be able to read or simply not have the patience to interpret. I wrote down my findings and at the time I was actually going to do a video on it. But after all was said and done, the results came as a shock to me. It wasn't what I thought at all. I thought science and biology pointed towards having simply two sexes, male or female. But the truth is more complex than that. A person's sex seems to be determined by these components, your brain chemistry, your chromosomes, and your physical sexual characteristics. Research shows that not all of these things align in the way that you would expect them to. To really, really get into this properly, it's just not possible without having its own video. Video, especially without making everyone and their cousin watching pissed. The best way I could put this is, you could have a number of combinations of sex chromosomes that deviate from the standard XX and XY, and they're not even that rare, and these may not line up with the way your brain and your sexual physical characteristics develop. You may be born with XY and have, for the most part, male physical characteristics, but your brain is that of a typical female. You might have an unusual combination of sex chromosomes, and your brain does not point towards male Male nor female with its patterns. And even if this is rare, okay, say 1% of the population of the world. At 1%, this means that there could be 70 million human beings like this. If we were to dip even lower, say 1 in 100,000 of the population, it's still 70,000. 70,000 people who are still people deserve to be treated and respected as human beings and identify with whatever they feel most comfortable aligning with. Plenty of these people have gone centuries trying to force themselves into fitting into the binary in one way or another with mixed results, some of those often resulting in sewer slide. In trying to look for answers on gender, I found that even if we solely look at the sexes and, and ignore gender, the binary just does not accommodate all human beings. It also pointed me in another important direction when it comes to transgenderism. We often forget that sex and gender are separate. I was also guilty of this. Gender is a social construct, and I don't think all of us fully understand what that means. <laughs> this does not simply mean that gender is make-believe and you can make up whatever you want or you feel on the spot, but more so that gender is dependent on your social environment. In our society, it's highly likely that you and I view women as looking a certain way, acting a certain way, having certain ideal roles, 
in relationships, and life as a whole. But we all know for a fact that in other societies, things can be different. In other species as well, we know the female counterparts take on what we may deem as male roles. It's just the stereotypes that we have built upon. It is how others view us and how we choose to present ourselves. If you have a mishmash of sexual characteristics that do not align with the standard binary, it's no mystery that individuals may present themselves or even appear as a gender that may not align with what is perceived as their physical sex. Therefore, if someone born female operates in a way that we as a society deem is traditionally male, or perhaps don't fit neatly into either category, then identifying with or being referred to as male or non-binary makes perfect sense. You can still menstruate, have PMS symptoms, get pregnant, have more feminine-leaning characteristics at times, yet can still, at the majority of the times, operate masculine or androgynous. You could be born as the female sex, yet present as the male gender. Both of these things can coexist. Both of these things are real experiences. So when my friend born with female sex characteristics but a non-gendered or masculine brain wants to identify as male and they feel they fit more in with the male crowd than the female crowd even if they grew up as a female with female experiences but changed as they matured i have no issue <laughs> There's no issue to refer to them as he or they. There really isn't. Them being referred to as different pronouns from a standard made-up binary doesn't cause any sort of meaningful harm. At that point, it comes down to whether or not you're just a stubborn asshole. <laughs> I love and adore my friends, and they have done so much for me that I could never even hope to come close to paying back in regards to care. The least I can do is call them by some arbitrary pronoun. It isn't gonna kill me. And quite frankly, those that get offended having to switch their language around to provide safety and comfort for their transsexual friends are the ones who seem pretty fragile and feeble-minded. Let me toss in there too that the stereotypical thing to do is to boo-hoo at trans people for being sensitive and like raging too easily, but also consider if you are being serious and not just trolling here that there are two major things at play here. For one, you having to think of every once in a while about calling your friend a different set of words than you're used to versus the days, weeks, months, or even years of having your existence laughed at and denied or even threatened are on astronomically different levels. They have been patient, they have been calm, and typically when they are breaking down and having a sensitive moment is when they've been pushed and kicked around to a point of not being able to take it anymore. It's <laughs> one strand of hay in comparison to a mountain. A mountain of hay. As opposed to you pretending your free speech is being robbed of you for simply being asked to use a different set of words. Sounds to me like you need a large huff of copium, buddy. The other point to be made is that beyond just dysphoria, which is a monster, and I suffer from it personally too, though not regarding gender, is mental well-being. There is a spectrum your noggin can exist on, and it won't always be the same. And with so much of you having depression, anxiety, autism, and all sorts of things, and this is even before dealing with all the gender identity stuff, these kids have a lot on their plate. Even though society and science has come a long way, there's still a long way to go. These kids don't always have the tools they need to operate comfortably and safely in society. So yeah, some melties are to be expected. Unfortunately, the small incidences with the loudest outbursts are going to be what's noticed as opposed to the many, many, many quiet, reasonable incidences behind closed doors. Of course, people are only going to pick out the bad ones or the loudest ones to paint the entire community. So my apologies here for going on that spiel. I'm not here to argue for or against trans. Anything in specific regarding gender as it's not my place to. But I wanted to lay down here that at one time I was critical. I did have my doubts and concerns and what I thought were for good reasons and then I did my research which is what I would assume somebody who's not operating out of hate or being a, a huge raging to do. I dug for answers, I looked for the science, and at the same time operated in a way that honors and takes care of my friends and puts their well-beings first. This isn't to pull up a debate about transgenderism or what have you. Again, again, letting you know. As I'm not here to debate these things, the science could be subjective, it could change, etc. But my point for explaining this to Nora will be explained in a second. I do want to make it starkly clear though, while explaining what I found and what I will be claiming down the road in relation to JK Rowling is that, that this is not an invitation for debate on that subject. If you go into the comments to argue against transgenderism, you're in the wrong place and you could take that shit elsewhere. <laughs>
your comments will be swiftly deleted. All right, this is where the chapter should jump you back to if you skipped. So let's circle back to those tweets by JK Rowling, especially where her panties were at a twist app. If sex is unreal, the lived reality of women is globally erased. It's no mystery that misogyny has been a prevalent issue for many women worldwide. There have been many movements to give women equal rights over the years and many issues women and girls face to this day. JKR feels as though her identity, her struggles and understandings as a female human being are being diminished by those who were born a different sex and then find themselves identifying more comfortably with the experiences of women. The problem with this is though both of these things can exist at the same time. You could be a feminist, a woman who has had her life shaped by being born female and living the female ex experience that comes with that, but you can also acknowledge trans women in the same space. You can experience things like a wage gap, SA, harassment, discrimination, all that aimed at women as a trans woman. A trans individual experiencing these things does not erase the experience of cis women who experience those same things. I think most people have enough sense to gather this and understand, so when they look at a talking head like JKR saying things like this, it feels like it's out of malice. It feels like she's intentionally denying their existence, which in turn trickles down into violence against trans individuals. It's a red flag. That's why they think that what JK Rowling is saying is hate. I don't know about y'all, but I think they're justified in thinking this. Days after those formerly mentioned tweets, she puts out what is <laughs> affectionately referred to as her TERF manifesto. <laughs> TERF meaning a trans exclusionary radical feminist for those who are unfamiliar. She puts out this opinion piece that pretty much explains, similar to myself, she had interest in sexuality and gender. Her adventures go in a much different direction than mine, however, trailing into boohoo Twitter started harassing me land and pretending to care about trans youth, claiming these influencing politics aren't doing them any good. She again really digs down her heels with wanting to separate the cis female experience from the trans women's experiences. She has a trust that supports project for female prisoners, domestic and SA survivors, and into multiple sclerosis medical research which behaves differently in the different sexes. Again, trans women just existing isn't inhibiting any of that. Trans women also experience domestic and SA. Trans women can also be prisoners, they can also have MS. It doesn't take away from the research or the healing. All of this so-called research, as she says, into gender and we land in two completely different places. Not even on the same continent. Not even on the same planet. Two completely different planets. She mentions the danger of detransitioning, mentioning a number of individuals who transitioned because they were same-sex attracted. The concern there should be more uh, erasure of homophobia, not the erasure of, or dismission of transsexual experiences. This might also be a controversial take here, and this is in my own opinion, but there are much worse things than becoming infertile because of indecisiveness with gender in your teens. There's more to life and being a happy whole human than procreation. I have to make an incredibly similar choice personally, though not regarding gender, but I have dysphoria related to an illness and the cure is something that may affect my fertility. I have the choice to choose possible infertility over essentially living a happy and healthy life. Dysphoria is a monster I can't even like graze an hair on and explaining. It's it's just impossible to explain simply, but it, it can ruin your life. It can unalive you. And for the most part, I choose happiness over fertility. And I'm sure trans many, 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 many transgendered individuals do the same. At the end of the day, it isn't really anyone's concern but the individual. It is a big decision to make. But you should also keep in mind that one doesn't just wake up one day and just transition. It's a decision you make over years and then go through months and years of counseling and medical attention to even get prescribed like puberty blockers or hormones. And then it takes time for those hormones to work. There's also an argument to be made about fake transitioners for attention from people who, you know, people like Blair White and JKR just eat that shit right up, but we don't hear much about that, do we? Her manifesto essay thingy. <laughs> 
<laughs> continues on about her experience with domestic and SA, wanting women to be safe and trans women as well, but not at the expense of biological women. Here's a direct quote. When you throw, oh my god, when you throw open the doors of bathrooms and changing rooms to any man who believes or feels he's a woman, and as I've said, gender confirmation certificates may now be granted without any need for surgery or hormones, then you open the door to any and all men who wish to come inside. That is the simple truth. Except it's not. <laughs> We have already heard the bathroom argument and this video isn't the place for it, but it's a lot of misunderstandings of the world around us and plenty of things that have been thoroughly debunked or trans people have been fighting for alternatives that people like JK Rowling have been squashing for years. What really grinds my gears, pickles my cucumber, is as I mentioned before how she claims to care about trans well-being and the actual science, claiming she's done the research, and then... <laughs> Drops this opinion piece with no backing beyond boohoo, Twitter's mean to me. Also, I can't be a woman if trans women exist. We cis men in bathrooms. To me, it feels like there's no actual scientific basis, no genuine concern to find a true answer. It's just her wanting to flex her victimhood status at the expense of denying the experience of trans women's experiences. People who have probably suffered quite a bit more than her. But no, that's impossible. They won't know and understand what it's like to be SA8 or whatever arbitrary thing that she thinks threatens her individuality when it doesn't. She's fine. She'll live. Your trans friends seeing all of this and the people around them and the actions maybe because of this might not be though. Just a thought. And here's what when I explain the, the, the trickle down thing and then things becoming dangerous for people, here's here's part of why. A US Senator cited JK Rowling's transphobic manifesto blog post in defense of blocking his vote on an LGBTQ bill that was proposed. This is what people mean when they say these things lead to harm. One rich talking head makes a very passionate opinion piece in a trickles into more and more until things that are directly harmful to LGBTQ people are made into law. Then your transphobic neighbor Jerry sees the news on Fox and starts harassing you out of their neighborhood. It goes and it goes and it goes and it goes. I don't want to make any personal opinions here, but this and a number of other things is why people don't like JK Rowling. She also has notoriously made it very known that any money you give towards anything Harry Potter franchise related goes directly into her pockets and into foundations that actively are anti-LGBT. This is why people have felt it necessary to boycott Hogwarts Legacy when it was released. One thing that is pretty common in the VTubing sphere and streaming sphere in general is streaming games at release. Sometimes companies even give sponsorships or discounts for streamers to stream games at release or even in beta to draw up hype and sales and such. As you can imagine, this led to the possibility of streamers playing Le Wizard game and disappointing fans. Of course, you're going to lose the respect of a lot of folk when you choose money, attention, and playing a video game over an act of boycott. Or at least from the outside looking in this may be what it looks like. Your friends and fans see this choice and see that you've personally elected that their identity and safety doesn't matter to you. By all means it doesn't have to. You don't have to care. You also don't have to be a good person. But you can't expect these people to throw clout and money and love your way when you're actively making a choice that tells them that you are choosing the, the game or clout or money over them. Over their safety and well-being. And I'm not saying that these claims are factual by any means but it's entirely possible that your trans and allied friends feel this way. <laughs> With this, people are going to get mad. And when a a mad and upset community, especially one that really wants to be heard, people are going to be loud. Unfortunately, it's always the worst of them that gets heard as they are the loudest. From there, the train derails and becomes more catastrophic. Let's turn our eyeballs over to Silvervale, a Twitch streamer and VTuber who received a backlash for choosing to stream the wizard game. This video was actually going to be a response to her, but I decided against it. It's just going to sweep more generally over her stream and the topic. Uh, despite this, her part and this is going to be a large part of this video. Starting with a stream she went live with explaining her side of the situation and crying to her fans. I'm gonna keep it a buck with y'all. I was at first super skeptical and not really on her side, but then through hearing the other side of things, hearing her point of view, seeing some reasoning that makes sense, my view may have been changed. So for context, Silvervale was catching quite a bit of flack, especially on Twitter, as she was one of the more notorious streamers streaming that game, despite people's outcry for the opposite. 
She elected to play the game anyway, which drew a huge red target on her forehead. As I explained before, outsiders looking in see a transphobe and will do what they can to further pull evidence and either take her down or stop her from playing the game. People, especially more sensitive or broken, are going to be incredibly hurt. And as I explained before, things derail and get worse and worse. And you guessed it, worse. <laughs> Once that side of the internet finds out, and you know which one I'm talking about, the trolling shall begin and it just explodes. When someone acts particularly sensitive or they see an opening to troll, they move in. They conspire to pretend to be kids spurging out on twitter.com in defense of transgenderism. So the actual sensitive or neurodivergent or both, kids will take the bait and run with the accusations, spreading rumors and hate mobs in absolute fuckery. <laughs> Poor Sylvia was not ready for what the internet kitchen was cooking. It's been really rough and probably a lot of you are confused about what's happening and why I sound sad. It's been really hard and I try not to talk about this kind of stuff because my stream is not a, a place for negativity or bad feelings. And I try not to let you guys see the side of me. But I feel like this was the best way to talk to my community directly because you guys are the people that I care about. I care about you guys, not the random people jumping on a hate mob for clout and attention and wanting to feel special and give themselves a pat on the back for bullying the stupid Harry Potter nerd. Silver Veil hops onto her Twitch live to address some rumors floating around. A lot of the time with creators, people are going to give you a hard time for literally anything. And these high profile creators usually ignore the flag, letting it die out until it gets way too big and needs to be addressed. Some ride the wave of attention, swiping up new follows and views and such. Some are a, a bit more sensitive or feel that the rumor about them is not something you can ignore. And I'd say both of these things were Sylvie. She was accused of being a transphobe and it didn't feel right to her to just let that slide. I completely get it. I probably would be broken too in her situation. <sighs> I don't know if I can play, guys. I don't know. It's, it's not really hard. <laughs> I don't know. I thought I could, but I just don't know if I can. Like, I'm I'm a lot more sensitive than I want to be. Um, I've always thought I'm not cut out for being a public figure, and I really think I'm not. I just want people to be happy. I want people to be happy and make friends and be able to play video games and have fun. That's all. Seva Rail finds out what it's like to be a public figure caught in 4K. <laughs> I both have sympathy and don't. I grew up online pretty much the age of the terminally online children. Of course, I had your typical child experience playing games on sites made for kids, but of course there were the not so child appropriate experiences. From early on and continuously over and over from there, I've seen the nature of the internet. People truly have nothing better to do than to troll sometimes, and some people make ample bait for trolling. The key to trolling is reacting. Doesn't matter if you're trying to hard smart them, are you anything. They want your reaction, good or bad. Fighting them doesn't help, and the cream of the crop is someone you can just continue to milk for their rage. The more you feed, the more they'll try to milk you for more. I had this sort of very early age, but even if you weren't like me, it's still been prevalent all around us for years. It's been on the news, it's been on any major website. The term we probably know, a lol cow, being milked for every last drop. Most people understand this, I believe. But an aspect that I think people forget is being a big public figure does not make you immune. In fact, it draws a pretty large target directly on your forehead. Most people who aim to be large creators understand this and understand that they are intentionally putting themselves out there. They understand the danger, the risks, and know that times are going to come where people will have less than nice things to say. Rumors will be made, slander will ensue. Despite this, good, honest creators keep their head up and just keep doing what they do, staying true to themselves no matter what. If any of you watching this also want to become a public figure of some sort, it's important that you keep this in mind. No one is immune to this sort of thing. You're gonna be crucified no matter what you do, so it's up to you to choose how you want to be crucified. When clips of this stream of Silvers was floating around on Twitter as well, people were not happy. A stream in which she breaks down crying, explaining the truth of the situation, clearing her name, just seemed like her 
being a bad sport, a brat, and causing people to further the narrative that she is in fact a transphobe. That's the gamble you take when you address these sorts of things as a public figure. As you know, I streamed Hogwarts Legacy last week uh, with my title, making it very obvious I was doing so, and uh, I was in the game category for the game because I was streaming that game. Um, and as you guys know, and I made it very clear when I was um, streaming the game that Harry Potter means a lot to me. And in order to have a comfortable chat, uh, a, a legible chat, uh, terms were blocked to stop people from inciting hate raids and filling the chat with harassment and negativity like what happened to tons of streamers before me. And those terms were basic terms used for harassment such as transphobe and other really negative things that would not be used in my chat ever in a positive way. So those were banned, of course. I feel like that's something that you would kind of just expect. But um, apparently people think that I banned the word trans in my chat, which I did not. Uh, you guys know that I have not because we've, we've had that, that conversation before and we've had trans characters in games before and we've been able to talk about them. These accusations I remember saying on my feed and honestly believing them. People were screenshotting the word trans being a black term, something I thought Sylvie must have done to avoid like trans discourse in her Harry Potter streams altogether, which seemed cowardly to me, but that's not the reality. What actually happened and this is what she mostly explained in our stream, is that like other big names on Twitch, she uses Automod. This is Twitch. This is not the streamer. It automatically prevents some terms from going through into chat, trans being one of them. She has her own block words, and then there is what Automod blocks. These terms being caught by Automod gives a different message from her blocked words. Once you encountered a block word from Autobot, you can unblock it, but as she claims, that word never casually came up in her chat, so she claims she had no idea. Since then, she and her mods have unblocked the word. People just randomly went into my chat trying to find things that Automod held, I guess. Uh, <laughs> and when you get words held by Automod, it specifically tells you that your your message is being checked by moderators because Twitch deems it as harassment. And incidentally, the word trans itself falls under the level two moderation filter along with gay or, or other, other terms just because they are regularly used uh, to incite harassment. And that level of moderation holds it so your mods can check it first before it's accepted into the chat. And you you can't add a block term to automod, that's all Twitch. Twitch picks the terms and it, it puts them as automod. You can put words that are approved, like if someone says it, you can approve it. But Twitch Twitch blocked that automatically, that was not me. Like we've, we've never had someone randomly come into the chat and just say trans by itself, because why? That's not something a normal person does. You know, we've had conversation with that word in a sentence and that that's fine. But that word by itself got hit by Automod. And I didn't know about this. I had no idea. That's why people noticed that it was being held by Automod because it's never happened before. Never. So I had no idea. I, I didn't know. My mods didn't know. None of us knew. Okay. I had no idea when that went all around Twitter because people thought it necessary to post it on Twitter before telling me or my mods because they did it purely for age. Uh, we fixed it today and allowed just the word trans for anyone that wants to come in and type the word trans. I, I had no idea. And whoever first decided to try and, and slander me with that was really grasping at straws and I guess Automat is what they decided to, to slander me with. So good job on my streams have always just been a place to relax and enjoy video games in a chill environment and to make friends. It's a place to to escape the world and just relax and enjoy things. It's not a place for arguments or intense discussion about controversial topics, no matter what they are. And I like to think that anyone that's part of my community and comes to watch my streams understands that and would comprehend that any discussion about topics like this would be prevented. Because it always is. This isn't the place for those kind of conversations. Like if, if you wanna, if you prefer to watch a streamer that delves into those kinds of topics at length and encourages that kind of discourse, you're more than, you're more than welcome to find someone that encourages that kind of discourse, but this is not the place for that. We just, we just wanna be cozy, you know? I'm, 
I've never and will never be a political streamer or someone that that talks about those kind of things because it's it just, and I just not and this just not this kind of community and like I've I've never had a negative viewpoint of anyone in the LGBT community before like we have plenty of LGBT viewers and I have plenty of LGBT friends and community members and like we love all of them I appreciate all of them I welcome all of them and it breaks my heart to think that people suddenly believe that because I played a video game, I'm suddenly a completely different person that, that has completely different views. And it just fucking sucks. Like this community has always been very welcoming to everyone. And it's just, un it's just insane to think that suddenly you're partial to the, the views of the person that created the IP of the game that you're playing. <sighs> Like, if I'm- if someone's streaming something that you don't want to watch, or you don't agree with, like, you're welcome to just unfollow them and stop watching the stream. That's- that's perfectly normal, that's acceptable, everyone understands that. So hopefully the- the people in this community understand and you can do with that what you will. If you would rather unfollow my stream and not watch me anymore, I completely understand. I hope that you enjoy the moments you had here, I hope you made a lot of friends in the community and- I love you no matter what. Um, if you want to leave because I played the wizard game, I totally get it. But uh, everything else is a lie. All I did is play the wizard game. Okay, guys. I I apologize. A little, little, little bit of my two cents coming in here. I struggle with these bits because there's this level of community sucking a little bit of community that feels inauthentic to me. Like, look, I'm so sweet and nice, haha, <laughs> right guys? You know I love you, right guys? But at the same time, I could see myself maybe saying similar things and meaning it, and that's why I actually tend to be pretty quiet online. At times, I might come across as cold. <laughs> Because there have been plenty of times where someone acts super sweet just to be the most conceited, ugly, jealous, or, or mean person you've ever met. And I never want to come across like I'm like kissing or buttering people up for an ulterior motive. I, I just want to be nice and supportive. Does anybody else relate to this? Uh, it's probably good that you're not on Twitter because Twitter f***ing sucks and I probably will never use it again. <laughs> But um, uh, it's gotten to the point where I need to address it before I was ready to because uh, it's blowing up. So uh, I guess we'll talk about it now. Also, alerts are muted and I probably will miss them. But thank you so much. Thank you, Anonymous. I really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Never take Twitter seriously. I try not to. Um, Except when something like this happens. Yo, the person that made that comment in her chat is actually onto something. Let him cook. <laughs> but I feel like this was the best way to talk to my community directly. Because you guys are the people that I care about the most out of everything. I care about you guys, not the random people jumping on a hate mob for clout and attention and wanting to feel special and give themselves a pat on the back for bullying the stupid harry potter nerd <sighs> sylvie honey they're not coming after you because you're the stupid harry potter nerd this is where it feels dishonest to me because we know exactly why people are mad you and i both know whether or not we agree that these people feel hurt and threatened by people willing to fork money for anything pertaining to the hogwarts ip a lot of these people used to be huge harry pooper fans too let's not ignore the issue and pretend they're just coming after you because you're really into harry potter or or that you're a nerd or whatever like let's be real most of us are or were also people jumping onto something that's really taking off doesn't mean it's for clout this is another thing that sh strikes people's disingenuous because what these people see as doing the right thing or taking notice of something that they deem is important is being dismissed as being for attention seeking which is funny because no one but you is getting attention you're the one getting the clout like how many subs from just this stream alone did did silverville get let alone followers and viewers come on be real but yeah i don't know i i didn't i didn't want to give in to the bullying 
uh, from all the terminally online Twitter freaks that don't even watch my streams. I don't know anything about me. And I'm, I'm having a hard time just talking to you guys right now. It was hard to even press the button, but I feel like it was necessary because this has blown up a lot and I don't want people to think that I am some kind of person that I'm not. Though hopefully you guys know that. <laughs> if you've been watching my streams, I feel like it's kind of apparent. So I, I don't know, I, I like to at least speak to anyone in my community that is LGBT that noticed um, all the hateful comments and slander going around and just explain that what you're hearing from people isn't true. And I don't know why people just mindlessly accept the things that they see on a tweet and just take it for fact no one bothered to fact check any of this which is surprising but also not surprising at the same time um so yeah i don't know in these in these kind of situations um as a public figure it's usually better to take your time to process things and let the toxic people get bored and move on and formulate what you want to say in the proper way because anything can be misconstrued. Um, but here I am talking before I am uh, mentally ready to do so because I've been backed into a corner. So that is what I'm doing. <laughs> but, um, people have taken to spreading lies and trying to slander me in the most ridiculous of ways and people are believing it so uh here i am explaining the facts <laughs> um but it just it, it got to the point where i was just backed in a corner and i have people legitimately thinking that i am a transphobe because i played a video game <laughs> and because automod does things that automod does by itself that i have no way to affect <laughs> and i didn't even know what's happening um so mentioning all of this hopefully uh, can kind of put a stop to the lies that people are spreading and hopefully the people in my community because I'm talking to the people in my community hopefully you understand that I'm not the kind of person that crazy people on Twitter are trying to say that I am um, and I hope that if you've been here for long enough you know that um, so I don't know like as is the way of toxic term the online Twitter though uh, they will move the goalpost and find something else to hate me for so I'll be really curious to see what that is I will uh, probably not be using Twitter after this uh, majority of my tweets are scheduled and I guess <laughs> they always will be from now on so if you want to talk to me i have a discord um i'll just retweet pretty art like once once a week or something but twitter man <laughs> i just i don't know it's uh it's been really hard but um to those of you who know me for who i am um thank you for being here thank you for being understanding and I love you guys. Again, something just really smells fishy to me. It's like she's blaming Twitter as a whole and kind of like dodging the cord to this issue. If Twitter wasn't here, the same thing would happen, just on a different site. Tumblr, 4chan, wherever people are, where they can anonymously share their feelings. Like, if Tumblr was still as big as it was a few years back, you could absolutely expect the same thing, just via likes and reblogs instead of likes and retweets. You are a public figure. You are putting yourself and your views and your beliefs out there. You make this choice every time you click the go live button, every time you schedule a retweet, whether you like it or not. <laughs> I know there's a large community of VTubers in what seems like a tight-knit circle, and I know a lot of them do hop onto things for cloud intention, and this includes being mad at things just because everybody else is mad at them. Just to be mad. Not even for like a real reason. However, with all of this like anti-trans legislation happening and real genuine issues these people are facing, I think it's almost like ignorant to turn a blind eye. It isn't just Twitter being terminally online Twitter. These are real scared kids mixed amongst trolls and it can be hard to differentiate for some which i understand but there are real scared voices out there being stomped over and being lumped in with the others they see it as oh silver veil thinks me wanting basic human rights is attention seeking and it's not a good look i think there's a way she could have addressed things without diminishing real people's reality without feeding trolls right 
Like, I think common sense would tell us it's not Twitter's fault. Also hits me as disingenuous. You know that's not it. People have been very loudly begging creators not to purchase, play, stream this game since its conception. You know exactly why they are upset, but you still thought that you could get away with doing it anyway, because apparently your childhood joy is more important. I'm not saying that they are correct, but how are you going to swat the bee's nest and then cry that the bees are hateful and mean when they sting you for swatting their nest? There's like at least a tiny bit of accountability that could be taken because it's no mystery. But no, but no, Twitter is evil. Trans people use no other reason. Harry Potter meant the world to me when I was little. I've talked about this a lot on stream and like it, it was my whole childhood. It was a world to escape to and I went to every book release and my little robe and my little scarf with my best friends. And that was my, that was my whole world. That was my whole childhood like i didn't have a great childhood and harry potter made it so much better and yeah it sucks it sucks that that's being tied with such horrible ideals but it's something totally different you know i'm getting to experience that the nostalgia of the best parts of my childhood in the form of like an amazing super high quality modern game it was like a dream come true for me like it was it was huge when i was little like there's nothing there's nothing like that now like it was like star wars but for really nerdy magic people <laughs> Like it was, it was a global pop culture phenomenon. Like it was a huge part of our lives. It shaped our childhoods. And like a lot of us didn't have our own computers. We didn't have internet. Like we had Harry Potter. <laughs> and it meant a lot to me. <laughs> and it meant a lot to my community to be able to relive those experiences with you guys. Like, like when I got my wand and when I flew on my broom, <laughs> And all, all those things, they meant so much to me. <laughs> and I just wanted to stream it. And I just wanted to share that with you. <laughs> I streamed this game because the world meant the world to me when I was little. It meant a lot to me as a child. And it meant a lot to a lot of people in the trans community as children. And you still harass them. <laughs> I wanted to share my first-hand experience of something from my childhood with the community that I love. <laughs> but, um, hopefully the LGBT people in my community um, understand my stance and understand that I just wanted to play the f wizard game because it was a humongous part of my childhood and shaped me into the person I am. <laughs> And Harry Potter in itself um, has a lot of good messages to share with people if you just take it as it is. Um, and that shaped me as a person and shaped a lot of us through our, our adolescent years, I think. And I just wanted to share it with you guys because I love sharing things with this community. I love telling stories and letting you see like i have a lot of childish joy with new games i play and things that excite me and i like that's literally the epitome of my childhood joy was harry potter you know so it just made sense i think harry potter being a large part of your childhood is completely valid it was a large part of mine too and it was one of the very few things that made my childhood bearable this is true for a lot of people and of course a lot of trans people however they have the wherewithal to be like hmm i don't want to support a franchise in any way that hurts me or my friends or even this looks fun but my friends express that this would hurt them i won't play it there are even ways that you could sneakily play it if you must play where people who look up and respect you won't see it like i sympathize i get that it was a big deal especially when the world around you when you're little was, was otherwise hard i mean i was there for every movie in theater despite my family not having much money and not being allowed to go or do many other things but you don't see me monetizing playing the game we as people kind of understand you vote with your money this is why people are very adamant that you don't hate watch something you don't hate play something because so long as they are getting money from you you're supporting them they're in it for the money maybe not the the political 
message, obviously, but these things tally up over time. Right now, you're maxing out the anti-trans column. While I understand the mistruths about the Autobot thing, you still make the actual decision, the statement, I don't care about your boycott because my childhood experience is more important. These people have been seriously harmed for decades. They don't give a rat's about your childhood wonder, but you essentially sign the check in a way granting power to the wrong team in their eyes. But wait folks, there's more. And I streamed it because they told me not to give in to the bullies and I didn't. I didn't and I don't want to. I streamed it because I thought it would be apparent to my community that my views don't align with the person who owns this IP. And for the most part it was. I streamed it. I streamed it because someone I care about is on the development team and I wanted to support them and show their hard work because he was really, really excited. He was proud to have such a big part in a game this big. Like, this is a big, big game. And he just got death threats and, and harassment when he told people that he worked on it. He literally got cancelled by people for saying that he worked on this game. It's literally his job. <laughs> but it does affect the people that made the game. And everyone wants to say that's not true, but it is. Like, there's a large, large number of LGBT people employed at Avalanche, which is the developers of the game. And that includes trans people and non-binary people. And I don't know why they don't matter. Like, according to my friend, who was on the development team, the success of the game does directly affect their livelihood after the launch of the game and it determines if the studio will be shut down or not and it's been shut down before and like that's literally a threat to their their livelihood and how they support themselves <laughs> Okay, she's kind of cooking here. I get wanting to support your friend who is a, a game developer. If it were my friend, I probably would do the same. I get the fear that if the game flops, your friend may lose his job, but there's also the counter argument that this is an actor choice that he made and the results of that are not anyone's fault but his own. He chose that career path. He worked for that company, which is also a choice. Yes, it sucks that if it flops, it could really hurt him, but it doesn't make him immune from consequence. It isn't anybody else's problem. That unfortunately is the risk you take with this career path. Being a game dev is an easy business. It's like boycotting switch ops. New people working at them are in a lose-lose situation no matter how you slice it. They have cool working conditions, however, their other options are being on the street, getting into trouble, or not having money to support themselves or their family. Then that having the job sucks, but unfortunately it's a sacrifice to be made to further the movement to get rid of the conditions and provide better safer conditions down the road. These, the people working at those shops, they matter. They matter so much but we can't hold back progress over insecurity that there may be a pitfall or two on the road to making things better and apple with a bruise doesn't mean you can't eat it but harassing people because they played a video game is not how you go about proper activism and try to make legitimate changes <laughs> like there's so many streamers that aren't streaming the game not because they agree with this boycott, but because they're scared. <laughs> they're scared of the hate mob. They've even flat out said that they're scared and you think it's fine. You think it's fine that they're terrified to play a video game. Fear should not be the answer. Fear is not the answer and it's insane that you think that it is. Like, the hatred around this game is because of this thought process that if you play it or stream it, you're somehow aligning to the views of this writer who barely makes a 20 of the amount she makes from theme parks and Nintendo and Lego and like all this other shit that makes so much more money and is just as easily if not more effectively boycotted. Supporting the game barely affects her. All that people will think about when they hear the word trans is like this boycott and bullying people and that's not what anyone wants at all and I don't know how it got to this point. <laughs> Like, the energy that people are using for hatred could be used much better utilized in other ways for things that could actually make a difference. And harassing and bullying people is not the answer. Again, she's cooking. She's right. I mean, the internet is the internet. You can never get the internet to take anything seriously. But for real genuine change, dragging Silver or other creators through the mud to the point they break down in tears isn't the W that we want it to be. While I understand the message behind wanting to boycott the game, she is right in it being barely effective. JK Rowling is still sitting on her mountain of cash and laughing. 
laughing. And as I mentioned earlier on in the video, trolls are going to catch wind and completely blow things out of proportion, pretending to rage and heckle Silver, and anyone else for that matter, which of course continues to make trans people look awful. Honestly, if anybody took the W from the situation, it was the trolls. Because creators were heckled beyond belief, timing on things were awful, it made things look even worse, and trans activists ended up looking like monsters for this. I honestly saw way more anti-trans flack on my feed than I ever did for anyone playing the game. Because of stuff like Silver Rail Stream, the actually terminally online people won. Not the streamers, not the trans community, not the VTuber community, none of them, just trolls, and that sucks. I'll get back into this in a sec, but let's finish off Sylvie's stream. Um, I'm sorry if I upset anyone or hurt anyone's feelings. I didn't mean to. I never mean to. I just want people to be happy. I don't know. I just feel really alone right now. This has been really hard. And it's not fair. None of this is fair on, on any side for anyone. So I don't know. Um, I don't know if I'm going to stream this week. Um, I'm in a really rough spot. I I want to. We have a lot of games I want to play. I just don't want anyone to be sad. And I don't... It's just not fair. <laughs> At all. <laughs> Doxing is never okay. Harassment is never okay. <laughs> Death threats are never okay. I don't know. Just put, put that energy towards something useful. You know? And just be kinder to people. I always say, it, and I know it's it's a dumb saying, but literally just treat people how you want to be treated. It's not that hard. Just be kind and understanding. And don't be a fing asshole. Just because streamers are easy targets, especially the girl that cries at everything. Like, I'm not gonna be bullied. No one wants to be bullied. So yeah, <sighs> just be nicer to people, to everyone. <sighs> anyway, I don't think um, <laughs> I can stay on stream for much longer. Um, I'm shaking really bad and I just want to go cry and maybe call my mom. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I'm sorry guys, I don't, I don't want to just come here and just like spew out all this shit, but... <laughs> I don't wanna, like, I wanna talk to you guys and explain because it's f up and it's not fair and it's all lies and I don't know why they pick me. I don't know, but I love you guys. I love all of you no matter what. I think I'm gonna go now. I love you guys. I'm sorry. Um, I guess keep an eye on the schedule if I'm gonna stream or not. I want to, but I just don't know if I can. Um, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry for all of this, for having this conversation um, and talking about negative stuff. But I don't. I don't want to be the person that makes a fucking twit longer and just makes it worse. So I'm here to talk to you guys and love you because you guys matter to me. I love you guys. I'll see you later. <laughs> 35 year old basement dwellers are eating good tonight, fellas. Absolutely gobbling up the tears. Well, Simps boo hoo for her. Like I said, nobody wins. This is my introduction to Silver Rail. Honestly, I had never watched anything of hers and had never seen any clips or anything. Nothing of her entered my online peripheral at all until this situation. So I have to take it with a grain of salt because I'm taking this at face value and I don't know what kind of person she normally is or truly is for that matter, being the internet and all. I don't know if I'm a percent on her side. I know for sure though I don't intend to keep heckling her obviously and she is right about this being the wrong way to go about activism. I know that it seems like we have to go to extremes to get our voices heard but she is right that it's hurting more than it's helping. Silver wasn't the only creator catching flack too. There's Pikami from Voms. This <laughs> fills me with otherworldly levels of cringe. Pikami announced her graduation and people took that as her being harassed out of streaming. Streaming those are game to be specific. People really bit onto this bait. And Silver has e-girl vibes like ooh sweet high-pitched anime girl with the animal ears and the big old titters. Meanwhile we have little old Pikami, an absolute sweet gremlin who is Japanese. And I'm not saying any of this is correct in any sense of the word mind you. But I feel like to the public Silver Veil is an easier target than Pikami. Almost like uh, Pikami is like an innocent old grandma that the internet is bullying for no reason. So 
So when her graduation was announced, people were shitting their pants. For the uninitiated, when it comes to Japanese idols, when you have come to finish your tenure as an idol, you graduate just like you would from school. It seems kind of uh, honorable, usually entailing a concert to celebrate. This usually happens when an idol ages, enters adulthood, and or ends their idol career to further their career or education elsewhere, or they just decided they're done. For a lot of them, this could mean acting, modeling, singing, dancing, all sorts of things. Some take singing and dancing so seriously that despite being an idol, despite already doing those things and being in an idol group, they graduate to study the craft more sincerely. On rare occasions, perhaps a limelight or the industry is just not right for them, so they graduate. In even rarer scenario, like Rushia from Holloway for instance, you've breached contract or broken rules severely enough for them to terminate your contract. This is a termination. You're fired. <laughs> Announcements, uh, documents will usually t refer to these as a termination and not a graduation because termination is not like an honorable thing. You're, you're being fired. Graduation is different because it's usually the individual idol's choice. There have been speculations of idols being quote unquote graduated by management pushing them to after a scandal. But the difference is they don't usually get like a celebration like normal graduations do. Since VTubers, especially Japanese, Japanese VTubers are so adjacent to the J-Idol world, they have taken on the culture of graduations when they wrap up their tenure under companies. This means Pikabe was to wrap up her tenure under her company Voms in an honorable way. <laughs> what people decided this means is that the controversy was so bad that the company forced her to terminate. This further fueled the anti-trans harassment, of course. Trans people are so evil because how dare they bully a pikmin off the platform for playing wizard game. How dare. What people also don't realize is that graduations are not sudden. I mean, maybe your indie VTuber will go, I'm graduating and dip off the face of the internet in one day, but that's just not how actual graduations with companies work. These are usually planned months in advance. And this happens by multiple conversations with management, and then they have to plan to put a cap on all of your stuff. This means privating or unlisting accounts sometimes, taking merchandise off the market, making sure to cancel contracts with other sub companies that fulfill things. And not only is this a hassle and expensive, especially if some things have to be refunded, like in the case of Uruha Rusia, Voms are losing their money maker. There's no way in hell that management didn't fight tooth and nail to convince her to stay. Well, ultimately, it was her decision that she came to of her own volition, to which they had to respect and then plan to announce. This took place way, way before the Hogwarts controversy, and then management had to come out in a video and explain this to people, because otherwise the company looks bad. How dare bombs kick Pygmy, you know, the face of their company, their most popular VTuber, their literal moneymaker. I don't think anyone would know who Voms was if it weren't for her. There's no way in hell they would willingly let her go. She also was on and off long hiatuses prior to the announcement and the controversy, aka the evidence was there. So after all this, you have people loudly being upset on one side and you have people being loudly upset on the other. Both sides are acting like the other are completely evil and out for blood. Guess what folks? Both are wrong! Both have worsened the situation. I know that like 4chan or whoever the hell is like kicking back and having a good laugh. They're back there clinking their Mountain Dew cans and living it up. Well, these other two groups are just seething. If you're listening and that's you, you do you and what have you. But for those wanting real beneficial change, I'm going to dump links to a bunch of resources in the description. Please give them a beep. Additionally, some things to note. One, don't take the rage bait. You are a dollar sign to whoever posts it. They want you to react and it doesn't matter how. <laughs> if something gets under your skin immediately, even if it feels right to speak up for what you believe in, do not respond to these people. Two, treat trans people like people. <laughs> Don't otherize them. They aren't some rare species. They're human. Normalize them. Not treat them like where's Waldo. If you don't treat them like a unicorn, then there's no reason for there to be confusion or fear. They're just normal people, part of everyday life. Trans conversations are normal conversations. Three, louder doesn't always mean easier heard or understood. You can make your voice heard without throwing a tantrum. Because if you throw a tantrum, you're less likely to be listened to, no matter how inhumane you think people are being or how correct you think you are. If JKR's crusty British having a can put them out of mild-mannered anti-trans manifesto that can in turn affect legislation, so can we. Four, 
They won't take shit from us, so we shouldn't take shit from them. Ignore anti-trans people organizations, stop fighting with them, and giving them attention. Them and their trash takes belong exactly there, the trash. Let them get the two likes and fade into obscurity. They don't deserve the attention. If we treat their words and statements like they don't matter, they won't. Their BS won't hold any water. Okay. <laughs> This has been long as hackeroni and cheese pizza, and my voice is starting to go. I hope I did an okay job on this topic. It's been a very long time since I've done a long video like this. As always, put your questions, comments, concerns in the comment below, and I will do my darndest to read them. All of my links are below as well as information on the art featured in this video. For video topic suggestions, feel free to DM me anywhere and I will consider it. Alright, thank you guys so much, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!